our recording. And um, well, this is Anne McLeod, the real Anne McLeod. Um, and thank you in advance, everyone, for your help as being volunteers. When we are on site, uh, we won't have any technical difficulties relating to webinars. Well, actually, that's not true because we do have a virtual component of SBC. So our volunteer lounge on site is room B207. So that is going to be your headquarters, your home, etc. So your main contacts on site are me, Ann McLeod, and we have two not Anns who are also your main contact, Alicia Perez, who is helping us out just for SBC and is with our wonderful housing company connections, and Rebecca Murphy, who is um, one of the newest members of the SAME National Office team, our senior meeting manager. So let's, whether or not you have, oh, guess what? My poll got deleted before. So I'm gonna create it on the fly. Um, have you volunteered before? Yes or no? Give me a second. They pay me the big bucks because, you know, think on my feet, I guess. I mean, really, you're probably all just laughing at me, but that's okay because I'm laughing at myself as well. So how many of you have volunteered in the past, either at SBC, JEPC, doesn't matter. A lot of our roles are the same. And all of you who are back again, thank you so much. And we really are going to rely on you, especially to help our newbies understand um, what they're supposed to do. I know lots of you um, have helped us out before for coming back and helping us because we really couldn't pull this off without you. So it looks like we have got about 62% of people saying, no, they haven't. So thank you so much. And um, as you can see, volunteering is super fun and you'll have even more fun when you are at SBC. Okay, so let's get the show on the... We're going to be sharing a lot of information. Overwhelming. So a few then you then um place if you have a question throughout this time you can type it into and um we will get to those questions look at the questions other people have submitted if you also have the same question first so uh, as always, we start with safety. And um, just so you know, our procedures, if there is some type of minor incident, you know, somebody cuts their hand while they're opening a box or what have you, the first aid room is located on the exhibit hall level, um, just outside the entrance of our exhibit halls. If the situation is life and death, you want to remember check you want to check the scene the public dispatcher don't be large and have the best uh community response and for the building you always want to give a just someone fainted they don't seem to be breathing i'm in room b 20 and then uh if you can care for the victim that would be great me or that i am breaking something that's been happening to me. um so hopefully you can hear me and i think i am going to turn off my camera in and hopefully that uh, with that situation um okay our
our COVID protocols. If someone's medical situation is presenting with COVID system, the so uh, want you to make with the individual and follow these procedures. Of course, we're going to send you all writing. If there is an evacuation type incident, then the building does um, make announcements over our speakers. So please do listen to those instructions and come to the SAME staff and volunteer rally point which is the water feature near the main exit doors. And we will provide you a map in your reference materials. So our SAME code of conduct, which is in place, of course, for all SAME activities, we do not tolerate um, unwelcoming and aggressive behavior so please do familiarize yourself with the code of conduct. As a volunteer, someone may approach you um, relaying to you some uh, alleged incident. In that case, please contact me and I will speak to you about the incident and then we will take it from there. Please do not engage with um, the alleged um the alleged person who um, did said incident, the SAME National Office will take care of that. So in-person health and safety protocols, as you know, face masks are required. We do have our comfort level buttons available, red, yellow, green. Uh, to indicate an individual's comfort level with being approached and being close to others. So as a volunteer, we encourage you to use those comfort buttons and honor the com comfort buttons that other people select. And if anyone asks you, what's up with those yellow buttons, those green buttons, the red buttons, where can I get one? They will be throughout uh, the concourse and you can let them know what it means. Just to review, um, when everyone registered for SBC, we do require that they be fully vaccinated from COVID-19. And they had to further agree to additional health and safety procedures. All of you should have gone through our um, vaccine verification and seen all of this. As a reminder, these are the protocols and everyone is required to wear a fat face mask covering their mouth and nose during SBC activities, except of course, when they are actively drinking their dirty martinis with blue cheese olives, margaritas, beers, or whatever else their drink of preference may be. Uh, we do have a risk management team who is going to help us um, deal with anyone who is not following our protocols. So we ask you don't engage with anyone who is belligerent about this. You can contact me or Rebecca and we will come in and we will um, help with this situation. So on to the more fun information. So as of 205, we had 2,967 individuals registered for SBC, 2,597 of which are in person. Folks are still registering. We're getting about 75 to 100 people registering every day. Of course, that is a mix of virtual and in person. Um, just so you know what we are expecting. Last uh, 2019, the last in-person SBC, we had about 3,800 participants. So honestly, guys, I am thrilled with our numbers because what more could you ask for? Um, what more could you ask for? And we've got over 400 exhibiting and sponsoring companies and agencies. 
So what are our expectations of you, our fantastic volunteers? Before you leave uh, to come on site, please make sure that you read and familiarize yourself with all of the information about SVC and SAME, the reference guide that we'll be sending you. Please thoroughly read the website. You can also download the um, a digital copy of our printed program. That is also very helpful. Please bring the reference materials with you. 99.9% um, .9 of questions you're going to be asked can be found in this guide. So read it, print it, have it on you. It's an alphabetical order. So if someone says to you, oh, where is the Academy of Fellows lunch? You can quickly look it up and it's right there. Another great resource is the SAME events app. I find it super useful. It's super easy to find things um, for you to help people out to tell them where to go. Please input into your cell phone the phone numbers listed so you can easily get in touch with us. And of course, bring a great attitude, patience, business cards, and your masks. We will have masks available on site, uh, disposable masks, should you forget them. But of course, I think we all have about 20 masks hanging from our doorknobs. So make sure that you bring yours with you as well. Attire, we will be giving you a volunteer t-shirt. When you are performing your volunteer duties, you must wear the volunteer t-shirt. Feel free to wear something underneath the shirt, a sweater, a button down, but don't wear anything over top. The t-shirt identifies you as someone who can help. That is why we have the t-shirt. So wear comfortable shoes. Of course, you are going to be standing for long periods of time. And once you're done with your shift, you can uh, change your shirt so you're not wearing the volunteer shirt because guess what? If you're wearing the shirt, people are going to ask you questions. And of course, these rules do not apply if you're doing bag stuffing on Monday afternoon. This says Monday morning. Bag stuffing is indeed Monday afternoon. What else? Of course, guys, we expect you to be on time and we love our SAME folks because we know for you on time means 30 minutes early and that's great. Please check into the volunteer lounge at least 15 minutes before your first shift so you can pick up your volunteer shirt so we know you have arrived. If you need any additional reminders about what you're supposed to do, etc. Again, have those reference materials with you. Have a good time. This is a great way to meet people, especially if you're working at registration or if you're a session manager, you are going to meet more people than anybody else because you're going to be the folks that they come to uh, when they arrive to the conference. Please do check out at the Volunteer Concierge, aka the Volunteer Lounge, at the end of your shift to make sure that you receive credit. We will refund you any balances that you have on your record, only if you complete both on all of your shifts. So we are going to now review the volunteer positions. So bag stuffing is pretty self-explanatory. You are going to insert a bunch of materials into our conference tote bag. I think we've got about 10 uh, different things that go into the bag. The SAME team will have that all set up for you. The Volunteer Lounge Concierge, we are counting on you guys. You are going to check people in and out, remind them of their responsibilities. If there are some no-shows, if there are some ad hoc emergency assistance needed, we're going to call you and then you are going to help us try and fill those holes. Exhibit hole badge check. During the exhibitor move in, you are going to be sitting outside of the exhibit hall and helping people who have the wrong credentials. So in order to get into the exhibit hall during move in or when the exhibit hall is not open, someone must be with an exhibiting company and they should have registered 
as a booth staff. If not, they cannot get into the hall. Why? It is a security issue. There is absolutely no reason for people to go into the exhibit hall when the exhibit hall is not open unless they're an exhibitor. So say, for example, Jackie comes over and she says, I need to go set up the SAME booth and she has the wrong collar holder. You can look up in the app, in the program, if SAME is an exhibiting company, you say, oh, yes, Jackie, I see SAME is an exhibiting company. I see that your badge says SAME, your badge holder, and you can let them go in. Human Arrow is directing attendees to their desired meeting location. So perhaps during major areas of movement, you will stand in the hall and you will say, everyone, the general session is this way. Go down the hall and up the escalator. And that is human arrow. Networking appointments. Volunteers are going to help those uh, appointments look up table. Help them look up question go into a little more detail on this later down table station base so those table will invited participants ensure that those going in are one of the invited participants Help in any other way possible. We will have some SAME staff there as well to tell you what to do. So let's talk a little bit about our session related positions. So here are our two SAME national office team who are our speaker ready room colonels. And um, they also will be telling you what to do. So our session monitor captains, and I'm seeing a lot of um, chats and questions here asking about what position you had. Okay, so when you volunteered, you signed up for certain positions. Uh, so we will send out that schedule again, but I would hope that you remember what exactly you signed up for. Um, if not, we will send out that list again later. But it is essential that you understand all the positions because sometimes we may need to move you from one position to the other. So session monitor captain, you are first going to go and check in at the volunteer lounge, then come to the speaker ready room. We have two speaker ready rooms and there will be one session monitor captain in each speaker ready room. So uh, the appropriate colonel is going to tell you to set how to set up the scanners. They're gonna tell you what you need to do uh, to train the session monitors on using them. You are gonna collect the room counts when the session monitors um, are finished with a session fill in for no-shows, etc. So you are the right hand of Belle and Karen. Session monitors, again, every single position is going to begin with check into the volunteer lounge. So you are then gonna go to the appropriate speaker ready room, check in with the captain. You are gonna understand how to use the scanners. Then you will go to your assigned session room there is a digital uh, monitor outside the room, which is going to indicate what's happening in that room. Please check it, verify that it's correct. And then as people enter the room, you are gonna scan their badge. You are going to stay in the session while it is taking place. Make sure that there are no issues. If there are any audio issues, for example, you can report them to the speaker ready room. If the room is filled to capacity, you are going to not let anyone else in. Midway through the session, we ask that you count the number of people who are inside, and you're gonna write that down. Um, when the session is over, we want you to refresh the bottled water that's at the front of the room at each speaker's place, and then 
return the scanner to the speaker ready room and you are going to give your session monitor the room count so it can be recorded. Those who are working as session monitors, you will be working multiple sessions per day, probably at least two. Um, so there is a break in between uh, for you to go back to the session monitor, the session the speaker ready room, so you can refresh the scanners and all of that good stuff. So I know many of you have worked as session monitors before. It seems overwhelming, but it really is not. So on to our registration positions. Our registration volunteer captains. You guys are going to remind the volunteers of the duties of each of the different types of positions. We ask that you monitor supply quantities. So, for example, if you're running low on conference tote bags or badges or what have you, you're going to refill those. And if there's any problems, you are going to work with our registration manager, Jacqueline Barrett, on doing that. We ask that all communications, any questions that need to come to the SAME staff, Jackie goes through the volunteer captain. That way it's only one person or two people contacting Jackie. The um, expediter is a person who is going to, as all the folks are walking up to our express registration kiosks, Greet the folks. Welcome to SBC. We're so glad you're here. Are you already registered? That is the phrase that you are going to be because the individual where yeah asked their vet at the vaccination desk. You can direct them to our full, which is on the second. Haven't verified their vaccine. I suggest that they return to the vaccination verification desk. If they um, say, I, I, I ain't doing that, then send them to the full service registration desk. They still have to show proof of their verification there, but definitely suggest that they go back to the verification desk. Now, if the individual says that, yes, they are uh, already registered, you can direct them to one of the express kiosks. Now I will say, we're gonna go through a map We've got kiosks on two different levels. So especially the folks who are on the fourth floor, if you see that the kiosks on the fourth floor are busy, please send the folks down to the third floor. So the third floor folks feel some love. If the folks have a purple ticket in their hand, that means that they did not pre-verify their vaccination status and send them to the administration station um, at the kiosk on one of the levels, because if they didn't verify their vaccination status, their badge will not print out on each floor. So our badge distribution folks, before you are going to be standing at our um, Scanners and printers tell their confirmation letter if they've got their QR code. Their give them their the appropriate holder, and you are going to send them on. Thank them for being here. Remind them. Is Tell them to pick up a tote bag and send them on their way. Um, we've got the kiosk admins now. We um, do, but it's essential that you know uh, about that because they can look folks up in the system. They can take payments, 
and they are in the badge hold the nation status. So if anyone has a balance due, their badge won't print out. If they didn't verify their vaccination status, their admin folks, they can help those people. And our final reg position is support. Behind the registration counter, you're going to be in front of the counter. And when folks come up to the full serve, you're going to very not already registered because the only people really who should be there are folks who are not already registered if they need a change made to their badge, if, it, if they didn't pay, what have you. Those are the people who should be at full service. So you're going to make sure that if someone who online, you can tell them, you know, I'm so sorry you made it all the way down here. It's breast. That's fine. Um, we will have a fast lane for people who are there. It only takes about to fix. Um, if you can send them to the fast lane. So I am seeing a message that I'm breaking up again. Unfortunately, I think that that is my inner you can still hear me. I am so sorry. Okay, so this is a, what the letter looks like with the barcode. And you see this barcode is what they will scan at our kiosks and the badge literally just prints out beep once this, the barcode is scanned. If a person did not pre-verify their vaccination status, we will have a note right here. So, you know, if they have the paper and it's got that note and you see it say, hey, you know what? Your badge isn't going to print out. You've got to go to the admin desk in order for your badge to print out and you will have to verify your vaccination status. This is what the badge printout looks like. So I want to call your attention to a couple things. On the very bottom, that is the color of the badge holder that you should provide that individual. It is extremely important that they get the correct color holder for security reasons. Now, you see on this badge, there's a little FT. That means this is their first time at an SBC. So you as a volunteer, please welcome them. Say, hey, I am so glad that you're joining us for the first time. We're so happy to have you here. If there's an NM on the badge, that means they are not currently a member of SAME. So you as our biggest supporters, welcome them to join. Tell them the benefits of becoming a member because who better to uh, give a testimonial about SAME than someone like you? And these are what all the, the rest of the tickets look like. Make sure when you give someone their badge, you remind them these are your tickets. Please lose them. We cannot replace them. We'll be able to get your out it. Don't point it out. People don't read, so they won't know what it is. This is what our badge holders look like. So you can see the different colors and so forth. And um, so you are aware of how you can. I so desks on the fourth floor, we have them on the third floor. Our full service registration is on the second floor and the vaccine very lobby level center calls the fourth floor. But curious enough, there is an escalator between the lobby level fourth floor and the other fourth floor. 
So I wonder, is it really the fourth floor? But I will leave that for you to decide. And these are, are the hours that registration is open. Okay, let's talk a little bit about vaccine verification, and then I am going to pause for any questions that have come in. As you know, when everyone registered, as you have, that they had to um, agree that they would be fully vaccinated and that they would show proof of such. And uh, go online to safe access their for health and safety. See right here. Serious old has tested. 14 days, we see that they end. That goes for, so be a, if you are at protocols, have this, uh, um, HIPAA compliant, we, everyone's information of alert, the people are decline. Some people who do it for a variety of reasons. Despite the fact that them, they have want to do it of our on-site desk, not SAME, their proof, they can show a clear app, they can show the California app, they can um, get that then said on. I am seeing so I on here and here we are patient numbers going to do and call in and so do is ask for key to perhaps and switch to phone Okay, Anne, <clears throat> I think you're asking me to take over. You said you're going to call in. I think that's what I got from your um, your message. So I hope I sound a little bit better. I am through my computer, so I apologize. All right, so we're going to look at some Q and A's questions. See if there are any. I think there were a couple, but they were already answered. Um, so S. Scully asks, where are the SKED for volunteering? I have a feeling he means where are the schedules. I think Ann did respond to that as far as we will be resending people's schedules for the volunteer slots, I think, uh, by the end of the week. And let's look. Okay. Much better. Hopefully that's for me. <laughs> Uh, in my connection, I'm I'm in a different location, so maybe that's the case. All right, so Q and A. So same thing. The other question is, how do we double check our volunteer schedule? Same thing, same answer. If you have any other questions, we haven't gotten through even half of our slides, so there may be 
other. Okay, a question just came in from Katie. And it says, what if we haven't received an email from Safe Access? Well, there's a couple things. You could go into any one of our forms of communication, but the, I would say the best way is just send an email to registration at SAME.org, and we can answer it that way. We also have a chat widget on both the SAME website and also the SBC website, and we have uh, many of our staff who are able to access the chat and can answer your questions. Okay. And I apologize because this is uh, this is new to me. So let's see. Okay. I am back. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you for taking over. Yes. So Michelle Reed asked the question. I'll just ask this one and then you can. Uh, so let's see. Uh, will accommodations be made for those with disabilities, chairs for those volunteers who cannot stand for long periods? Actually, Anne, if you want to answer that question, that would be wonderful. I will take that. Yes, thank you. So we'll have to look and see um, what your job is. We did on the sheet try to indicate if standing was going to be required. Um, so if you are at a job that requires that, we're going to have to change your job. So um, Michelle, we'll take a note of that. We will look and we will get back to you. Okay, so um, I see another question from Julie <clears throat> saying she couldn't hear me when I was talking about the types of vaccine documents that could be accepted. So basically, we will take uh, your vaccine, uh, an original vaccine card. We will take a photo of the vaccine card. If someone has the clear app, if your state has an app, we will take that. So um, the generally accepted um, formats of proof will be accepted. So looks like um, looks like we are all good. So, all right. Thanks so much, guys. This has been really an effort in um, patience this afternoon. Um, so appreciate your hanging in there. Okay. So we just talked about questions. And um, so let's move on. I'm just going to take another little sip of water, not martini. Okay. So moving along, this is a map of downtown Atlanta. Of course, the SBC is being held at the Georgia World Congress Center. And we have a number of hotels that we are using. There are no shuttles. But if someone does not want to walk from their hotel, we will provide a lift code to them upon check into the hotel. The lift code is in that letter. It can be used only for going from the hotel to the GWCC and back. Here is a rendering of the GWCC. It is a very large building. We are in building B, B as in boy, as in bravo, as in bourbon. And there is construction going on outside the building here on Andrew Young Boulevard. So, most people will likely be coming in from this side here of where the Omni is. And you are coming in on level four. Immediately when coming in, we have our fantastic SBC coat and luggage check for anyone who perhaps took an early flight and they're coming straight from the airport to the convention center, they can store their things in the coat check room A412. They cannot leave their stuff at registration. They cannot leave it in the speaker ready room. They must leave it in room A412. And so entering on level four from the Omni, one would walk across 
uh, to the building B. What's interesting is we're entering in level four, which is the ground level. So as someone comes uh, down the corridor or up the corridor, uh, at where the star is, sort of, um, the vaccine verification desk is here. And they would come down the escalators to get onto level four. And so our first set of express registration kiosks will be here uh, at the bottom of the first set of escalators. On level four are all of our education sessions. And then one can go down to the third level by either set of escalators. So one goes down from level four to level three. Level three, we will have additional express registration counter. So again, for those folks who are expediters, please make sure you do send people down to level three because we will have a huge bottleneck on level four if that is not done. Level three is where of all of our business opportunity sessions are taking place and our networking appointments. And of course, this is where you can again go down another set of escalators to go to level two where full service registration is, where the volunteer lounge, volunteer office is, and access to the exhibit hall. So you can see um, all the other activities that are also happening on level two. And then level one is the exhibit hall. Um, and again, that is where the first aid office is. So you are seeing now our schedule for the exhibit hall and what is happening when. Food and beverage is offered in our exhibit hall. If anyone is looking for something to drink other than water, it is found in the exhibit hall. If anyone says there was nothing to drink anywhere at SBC, they are wrong. There are multiple beverage stations throughout our exhibit hall. We do have a buffet lunch in our cafe areas every day, which is the at the rear of the hall. Continental breakfast on Friday is being served in the exhibit hall. Of course, we have the SAME booth. We've got networking receptions on Wednesday night and Thursday night. Our exhibitor service desk is where exhibitors should go to if they're missing boxes, they want to order additional furniture, and that is located at the far left corner of the exhibit hall. Our networking appointments, which we know are super important to so many. Our SAME national office team who are running the appointments on site are Amira Kreina and Katja Watt. So they will be there working with those volunteers who are supporting the networking appointments. There are two types of appointments this year. There is the matched networking, and what is new, peer-to-peer -peer appointments. So the match networking are appointments that are hosted by our government agencies and exhibiting companies. We've had these multiple years at SBC. So our hosts com complete a profile of attributes that they are searching for in companies. And attendees are matched up with hosts based on how many of those things that they have based on the profile that they filled out. Peer-to-peer -peer appointments is basically any attendee can search for other people and they can request appointments with them. I mean, this is a way to meet people by, not by chance, but on purpose. Appointment requests are made via the VEP, which is our virtual event platform, or the ASC, our attendee service center. I am sure many of you have appointments I know Cindy Lincecombe has some. She was on the ball and made her appointments immediately when it opened. So right now, anyone can make appointments. It's open to everyone. Everyone has full ownership over their schedule. There is no obligation on anyone's part to accept appointment requests that they receive. 
So we do ask that our hosts, that all of our attendees respond to the appointment requests within two business days. As we know, not everybody listens to what we say. And so sometimes they don't respond. You know, a frequent question is, I sent an appointment request to um, that crazy Ann McLeod, and she hasn't responded. What should I do? Should I go to the appointment? So if you got this question, I would say, well, you know, we do remind everyone to please respond to the appointment. Um, if they haven't responded, if they haven't accepted the appointment, they probably won't show up. But if you don't have anything else to do, you you can show up. And um, if they show up, then great. If not, well, you've got a few minutes of downtime. So all of our hosts do have assigned tables throughout the event. And for our peer-to-peer -peer appointments, we will be assigning tables to them um, when they arrive, and we will be handing, handling this next week. So just a little bit more about managing these profiles and appointments. So our host Hello, I think we may have just lost Anne. We'll give her a minute to. I um, came back on my computer. Um, my phone hung up on me and I'm not, I, I think it could be because of the timing of the webinar. Can you hear me? Y yeah, yes. Okay, I think it's because it cuts off after an hour. So what's happening here is we're gonna run out of time. And um, I truly apologize to everyone for all these technical difficulties. Um, believe me, this is more stressful for me than it is for you because I hate it when things go wrong. But you can plan as much as you want and some things are out of your control. In any case, all of you hopefully um, understand about our appointments. You've already maybe gone in to see how this all works. We have videos, we have how to guys about this. So please, I'm begging of you as our volunteers, check that out so you understand how it works before we get on site. The app is a great place for people to check their appointments, for people to make new appointments. I wanna point this out, ethically, S-A-M-E, I cannot make an appointment for you. If you are unable to figure out the system, I can't make an appointment for you. Ethically, I can't do that and our staff can't do that. And as volunteers, I would suggest that you should not do that either. You can maybe show them how you have done it and guide them, but please do not make appointments for anyone or on their behalf. It's actually pretty easy. So moving on, our business opportunity briefings and education sessions. So all our business opportunity briefings are being live streamed to our virtual audience and they are being recorded for on-demand viewing. Our education sessions are being presented in person um, only. They are not being live streamed. And so um, those, if the virtual audience will have to wait and listen to the recordings. So uh, access to these is all through our virtual event platform and copies of the presentations are on the virtual event platform, not on the website. We do give out PDH credit for education sessions, not business opportunity briefings. PDH credit is given um, if you listen uh, to the recording or in person, you still get the credit. So we were going to do a quick tour of the website, but I am afraid that we are going to get disconnected again and because of my bad internet.
So um, we are going to forego that. And also since we're running out of time. So please, I encourage you to please go to the SBC website, log in to the attendee service center. Your, your login to the attendee service center is your SBC login. It's in your registration confirmation. It is not the login for the SAME website. It's for the SBC website. So please go in there and take a look, practice, so you are able to help people with anything that they may ask. So I am going to stop for some questions. I see Cindy has said, my SME login to the app does not work. Well, Cindy, you need to use your SBC login, not your SAME login. So when you log into the My Planner on the SBC app, you want to use the same credential to the on the web. Let's see here. Ask if we live in the where should we park? Convention Center. And I am told by our um, contacts at the convention. Red. Now I want to remind everyone that there is a football evening. And so um, parking, I don't know what parking uh, rules they have in place. I think for the building closes day for the um, so just there is parking at deck is what is recommended. So I am going to just breeze through this as we are um, running out of time. So um, Tuesday is our first day. Registration is opening. We've got exhibitor move in the national board of have our president's reception in the are welcome to come to our president's reception. So if you are still, if you're working that day, come on over. The Atlanta Post is doing a golf event at Top Golf. That Top Golf for young professionals and fellows are having a networking event. Who are a member of one of those demographic groups? Please enjoy. I see that I'm cutting out again. I am so sorry, guys. Um, I guess I've earned my martini today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, covered all of this. Wednesday. Here is our schedule. It's a really long day on Wednesday, guys. So if you are working that day, thank you so much because um, help us pull this. We've got a number of COI meetings that is community of interest. We've got our opening plenary session with our chiefs panel, our networking appointments, business opportunity sessions, Academy of Fellows luncheon open only to SAME current, SAME fellows, and our CEO roundtable with only Thursday with live um, news. What's the um, and we have confirmed that BB Hidalgo, who is the Associate Administrator for the Office of Government Contracting and Business Development at the Small Business Administration, is joining us in our general session to give some remarks. And we have this awesome Paralympian and veteran, Melissa Stockwell, um, who will be giving a keynote address. And we will be recognizing our fantastic um, Small Business Award winners. And Friday, we will be so glad it's Friday, red shirt Friday. Of course, the volunteer shirts are red. So anyone working on Friday, we've set you up for success. And we've got a half day of activities on Friday. 
And here is a quick overview of our SAME events app. So strongly, strongly suggest that you download the app, do it now, get familiar with it because it really is super easy to use. It helps you remain organized. If you already have you were, if you don't have the app, you want to search for SAME events in your app store. And you're going to click on events and then SBC 2021 in order to load S already have the app event that you used and then you can choose sbc 2021. so here is uh the main menu of the app and you can see in the bottom middle there it says my planner so you need to log into my planner using your attendee service center credentials and this is how you can um optimize your use of the app. I want to call out at the very top of this My Planner menu, you see that it says make profile public with a checkbox. You will not show up in the attendee list on the app if that is not checked. So if you want people to be able to see you in the app's attendee list, um, you can DM folks through the app and they can't dm you if your profile is not public i want to call your attention to this can turn bookmark events you are like you wouldn't even remember okay if it wasn't on your calendar turned on before you have a bookmark event so if you've got those networking appointments turn this on uh, there you have it for that you can search for sessions here you can do it by day you can filter it by track by using the filter button in the top bookmark a session calendar you can search for exhibitors by clicking on the exhibitor list. It is going to list them alphabetically. You can select an exhibitor. This is going to pop up where you can bookmark that exhibitor. You can schedule an appointment with them or I appointment with them. Schedule button. This is what it looks like when you go to schedule an appointment. It shows you the times that um, the you're gonna and that you are requesting. Scroll down to the bottom, type in a note about why you want to meet, and click request appointment. If you don't click request appointment, your appointment is not submitted. I would say this is the number one problem with appointments. People. And here is just a quick summary of the My Planner and what it looks like. So in the far left here, you're seeing my, my exhibitors. The next one is My Agenda then my sessions and my appointments so you can see it really helps you stay organized throughout the conference so with that again i want to thank you so much for joining us today if you have any questions so we can get to those um we thank you in advance for your for volunteering we really do to help us pull this ourselves on customer service to people we care about it and a good experience if we didn't have all of you helping us out so what questions do we have so lynn is asking she has the app already from previous years it isn't showing this year's event how do i get that well lynn I have an iPhone, and so that's how I am going to tell you. Um, 
if you've got the last event, it should probably pre-populate to that. You're going to want to click on start. And then um, you should go to events in the lower right. And then hopefully you events. Sometimes for an iPhone, the app and then reloading it. And if you have an Android phone, I um, would think it's probably something similar to that, but I personally don't have one, so I um, cannot say. A little bit. Um, Michelle at said, can you type the parking answer in the chat? I am breaking up again. Well, Michelle, I'm going in again. You of and question can volunteers app calendar alexandra i would you probably could you're a session manager questions that are to the calendar tasks up hundred people so but that's a question for the future of how we can um um that I have to guys again um for your time and your pay technical details are perfect never thought i would again in a very public kind of way so thanks for um your humor about martini martinis vodka with blue cheese olives and if there is no martini i'll take cheetos and soda tall um so please, I'd rather drink water. So now that you know all about Anne McLeod's drinking preferences, uh, laugh, I hope to express for the entire SAME National Office team our sincere appreciation for you and your volunteering your time with us and with our SBC participants. So we will see you next week. If you have any questions at all, you can email us at registration at SAME.org. A to send you a copy of our volunteer guide, and we are going to send you a copy of the schedule. If there is anything amiss on the schedule, if you can no longer work, please tell us immediately because we would like to try and fill your position. So thanks so much, everyone. Uh, good afternoon in Atlanta. Bye-bye.